Ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name is Langs, uh, and I am very proud to announce that I am officially in the semi-finals uh, of the Advanced Wars Quack Cup. Uh, that means that if I win this match today, I will go on to the Grand Finals and have a chance at winning my very first Advanced Wars by Web tournament. Now, some of you may be asking, Manx, wasn't there supposed to be another game in between this one and the last one you covered? I mean, there are five games, and you won game one and two, so what happened to game three? Well, I did win game three. The thing is, I won it in a very boring fashion. My opponent ended up timing out, so I was like, yeah, this doesn't really warrant a video. I'll just skip game three and jump straight to game four, which, unlike game three, was an absolute banger. This game was wild. And it's wild because the Quack Cup is a tournament that features high funs with a lot of wacky rules and gimmicks. And this map may just be the wildest one of them all. Just look at this absolute chaotic mess. It's glorious. Four HQs. I don't think I've ever seen a map with four HQs before. Now, just because you have four HQs doesn't mean that your opponent has to conquer them all. If you lose a single one of your HQs, it is actually an instant game over. It's not like labs where you need to conquer all the labs to win the game. You take one of your opponent's HQ, you are going to win immediately. So you need to use these four black boats right here to guard your HQs. You can cover the gaps in the mountains or keep them in the mountains. You can also use the black boats to repair. They're actually very detrimental to your success of winning this match. In addition to that, this is a mixed base map. So uh, there are a million fronts, kind of similar to Caustic Finale. Now these two bases start red. That's just a first turn advantage. Uh, black player will conquer these two bases on turn one. So what you'll end up having is you'll have three bases, basically. You'll have one here. You have two bases here. Oh, sorry, four bases. You have one base here, two bases here, and one base here. And your op my opponent will have two bases here, one base here, one base here. So this is kind of my strong side. This is my opponent's strong side. And the strong side directly threatens the HQ, but it's kind of easy to reinforce over to your HQ as well. So this ended up being an absolutely wild matchup because it's such a dynamic map. It's also massive. It's a huge map. It takes a long time to cross the map from one side to another. So if you want a front switch, it will take you some time. It's not like the smaller mixed base maps like Caustic Finale where you can front switch basically within a day or two. Here it takes you a lot longer, so you need to plan out your turns a lot more carefully. Furthermore, the comb towers are all centered in the in the center, and one of them starts captured. Uh, the other one you need to capture yourself. And uh, you can certainly try to steal your opponent's a comb towers. That will happen if you completely neglect the center. Let's say your opponent just decides to go all in on your HQ. You could very well take both of their comb towers away. And with four comb towers, that can uh, swing the balance pretty hard in your favor. Lots of airports to conquer too. Each player can take two airports in total. And battlecopters and bombers are spectacular on this map. I mean, they're always good, but in a mixed base map, they're even better. Now, the map is pretty open, so Antire will be able to ward them away somewhat. Not a lot of mountains and rivers that your battlecopters can hide behind, but it doesn't matter because in a mixed base format, you want high mobility. Movement is the name of the game. You want movement and you want firepower. Now, this is exactly why I ended up picking Max. Now, uh, I did several training matches on this particular map. Uh, I tried playing against Grit. We found out that Grit was completely useless on this map, as he tends to be in the Quack Cup, even though he's available. And I came to the conclusion that, yeah, Max is definitely the top pick uh, of this particular map, because mixed base, he gets extra movement. You don't really you don't really build indirects and mixed base, and the reason why you don't build indirects is because, let's say your opponent decides to build like two rockets, which he could very well afford in high funds. Okay, then you just front switch away from the rockets. You apply pressure elsewhere. What is he gonna do? The rockets have like four move, like or five move, like, and they have to move on roads to even be remotely quick, and even then they can't keep, keep up, so. Your opponent builds a lot of indirects, you just front switch away from where his indirects are, and you crush him on another front. And then if he then builds indirects there, then you just converge from both sides and attack them head on. And there's no way he's going to be able to keep it up. Uh, he's not He's not going to be able to wall that, especially not like Max with two comm towers. Get out of here. Like his tanks will one shot infantry uh, on planes. It's absolutely ludicrous. You're not you're not going to be able to do that. So, yeah, don't don't play grit. That's all I'm going to say. I, I think some people have tried grit to not a lot of success. But I picked Max and my opponent picked Fun Bolt. Now, Fun Bolt... Again, he's a safe pick uh, on most maps, and certainly in high funds, this Ex Machina comes in a lot quicker than you might think. 
And normally I'd say that Von Bolt is a pretty damn good pick in any mixed base map because the extra defense is just so good with all the engagements that is taking place. Like for example, Von Bolt is unrivaled on Caustic Finale. If you if you try to fight Von Bolt in tier one on Caustic Finale, you will just lose. In fact, I do believe he's banned in tier one. So uh, I don't blame my opponent for thinking that Von Bolt is a good pick on this map. However, there is a massive detriment to playing Von Bolt on this map. I'm not going to say what it is right now. I'm going to make you guys guess. Take a look at the map and see if you can figure out why Von Bolt is trashed here on this map. I'm not going to say it right now. I'm going to I'm going to let you guys know when it becomes relevant, but you'll see soon enough why this is a massive mistake. Now, that doesn't mean that it's like a free win for me or anything, but it does mean that I have a big advantage going into this. My opponent is named Sergling Stew. I've seen this guy around here and there. I think he was part of the Egg Cups. Seen some of his games. He joined some of the some of my free for alls. I think I've seen it in some of my streams. I he I know he like he's a player that I I recognize his name. I, I don't think I've um I may have played a match against him on the league. I, I think something springs to mind. I think I faced him before. Uh, he's, he's a pretty okay player. Uh, so he's not he's like, like a top rated player, but he's he's pretty strong. He's 1130. That puts him in like I think into the, like the top five percent of most uh, most uh, players. I'd say we, we're fairly evenly matched. I think my rating is somewhere around 1100, maybe 1200, and when I'm when I'm having a really good day. So I'd say we're pretty evenly matched. But he is behind for reasons that I will get into later. So, ladies and gentlemen. That's enough introduction from me. I say we jump into this match. So, uh, the map is called, by the way, United by Blood. I didn't mention this uh, prior. United by Blood. So, uh, we'll, we'll see if we'll be able to unite by blood or if we'll just unite by crushing our opponents. So, obviously, my opponent is going to start by capturing my bases. Not like I'm going to be able to build anything from them. Oh, my goodness. I'm glad I'm not drinking Coke again. Mm -mm -mm. It's the worst experience of my life. What I do for content, ladies and gentlemen. What I do for content. So, uh, looks like my... It looks like there's a bit of a glitch there. Let me, let me, fi let me fix that real quick. There we go. You gotta make sure. If you don't turn your your units correctly, they may face in opposite directions. And I know that triggers the OCD for some people in the comment section. It, it certainly triggers my OCD, so I want to make sure that I don't do that to anyone. So here, uh, I actually opt to property skip to go for the air approach one turn early. In high funds, this is risky to do because um, every property is worth 2,000. So property skipping can be pretty severe. It can m miss you out on some pretty valuable units, but I want to get the airport as quickly as possible. This one too, because I realized that whoever can pump out Battlecopters first and get like Battlecopters all over the map are going to be in a super good position. One thing that's kind of nice about going up against Von Bolt and one thing that I really appreciate is that he doesn't have any movement increasing powers, which means that I don't have to constantly calculate around the range of his untire, depending on whether he's going to get his power or not. One of the worst thing I, I, I absolutely despise when I when I play high funds and I go up against the CO like Ad or Cole Jess or any other CO that gets like a big movement boost with their normal power and superpower, or like Jake, for example, gets plus two vehicle movement. Is that I feel like my bot? I have to think so much more when I place my battle copters because I constantly have to take into account what if he pops a superpower this turn? Then they suddenly get extra two movement. I have to calculate forest penalties. Oh, it's such a pain. But with Fun Bolt, you literally can just check the range of his entire like this, and you'd be like, okay, as long as you stay out of the red line, you're absolutely fine. They're not gonna suddenly start moving quicker. And I do think that's a pretty big deal. Uh, I, I think that that makes battle copters by default much better because. Well, you don't have to think as much, and uh, it's nice to not be able to think as much. <laughs> you know, if your brain power is limited, you want a simpler match. So I open up two Neo Tanks right off the bat here. This is this is a wild map with a lot of income. So regular tanks, sure you can build them, but Neo Tanks are really where it's all at right here. You can see my opponent is immediately going to try and deny me this property right here. There's so many contested properties right off the bat, and we're going to start clashing over them so incredibly quickly. He moves over here. These properties will usually go to my opponent, even though they're very close to my HQ. Okay, you want to be very careful, because your opponent can really quickly uh, launch an attack on your HQ. You have your black boats, but uh, he can bring artillery in to bring them down. That's like one thing that I can't do as Max as easily. I can't take down the black boats. 
if I want to rush this HQ, because, again, my artillery dog shit, so I need to get some bombers out or some battlecopters. Battlecopters, I think, against black boats, they do, like, 20 to 30% damage. Bombers are, like, 60 to 70%, so bombers are a lot better, but I don't think they one-shot black boats, if I remember correctly. Maybe with, like, two comm towers, but I don't remember. Now, using these, uh, using these black boats to boost your infantry, very important. You want to use these black boats for everything they're worth. Four, you have four of them starting out, so use them to boost your infantry around the map. Really important to do this. Here, I send the tank over here to threaten my opponent a little bit here. There's so many fronts to threaten, so much stuff to do. And here, I decide, you know what, I'm just going to cap the city. If you want to attack me with the Neo tank, I'll attack you with my Neo tank. And I'm, we're, we're both on one base here. So I am happy to train Neo Tanks into his Neo Tanks, especially considering I'll be able to strike from a city if he attacks me. So that'll statistically be pretty good for me. I build another Neo Tank, and uh, there we go. I use again. I use my black boats. I, I plan now to use the black boat to transport this infantry up here and capture this property. Now I didn't build a battlecopter this turn. Surprisingly enough, I guess I couldn't afford it. Kind of surprised, considering I went for the airport one turn earlier. So I guess that was completely worthless. I think maybe I didn't intend on building this Neo tank this turn. I didn't realize he'd actually move down here, so I didn't, I couldn't afford a battlecopter. But I'm wondering if maybe I should have built a medium tank and a battlecopter instead. Might have been a better way to spend my money, honestly. But uh, yeah, my opponent now moves in with this Antire. So this is also another thing that's very scary about this map is that an Antire can air can airport lock you very quickly. Now you do luckily have these two forest tiles to make this a little bit less li viable. And this is also why it's kind of nice that Fun Bolt doesn't have movement increasing powers because uh, a max Antire here would have been a lot more scary under the threat of popping his powers and suddenly being right underneath your airport. So you can see like it doesn't take a long time for the air for an Antire to get within range of this airport. And then suddenly, if you can't ward it away, that airport becomes useless because you don't want to build anything in it. So my opponent builds a medium tank there, interestingly enough. Again, I don't think medium tanks are that great in high funds. I think in a, on a big map like this, you want movement, and so neo tanks are kind of king. But, you know... If you, if you can't afford it, then I guess a medium tank is a better option. Now here, you can see I'm going to start pumping out those Battlecopters. They're going to be everywhere on this particular map. Using my Black Boats, to, you can use them to refuel. Do, do make sure you keep them topped up on fuel, because they run out a lot quicker than you might expect. I have to get out an Antire, of course. I move down my Neo Tank as well. Again, just placing it in range. You can see he has two Neo Tanks here in... The, the classic Von Bolt City Sit strat, where he just places his Neo Tanks on top of cities and they become impossible to kill. Actually, one shots infantry. I guess they do with uh, Com Tower. Huh. Yeah, 20% extra firepower on the Neo Tank is enough to uh, is enough to kill uh, kill the infantry on the city. And yeah, again, once again, the Von Bolt City Sit. It's it's so difficult to deal with because. Uh, the extra defense that he gets is only 10%, but when it's when you stack it with terrain, it becomes very hard to dislodge those Neo tanks off the cities. Now, it's my city, not his, but still, I still don't want to attack into that. Now, Sorglings 2 is going for his comm tower, builds an entire, a battlecopter, sends an infantry down, another battlecopter. He's going to build a lot of battlecopters too, but in a battlecopter tug of war, I do have the advantage being max. It's just my battlecopters are just better than his, straight up. Um, the extra 10 defense doesn't really matter that much, because Battlecopters hit each other so hard anyway. So whoever gets the first strike will win. It doesn't matter if Bolt has 10% extra defense. And so when, when I, with me having extra movement, my Battlecopters are always going to outcompete his Battlecopters. So the more Battlecopters he builds, the better for me. Now here, again, look at me cleverly using the Black Boat to block the infantry and the tank right here. Again, just there's so many clever ways to use your pre-deployed Black Boats. I absolutely love it. So, again, so many cities to capture, so much to keep track of with this map. This is a wildly complicated map. I mean, absolutely bonkers. Just look at look at how much stuff is going on. And look, we're on day seven. There's only three Neo tanks out, out on the field. I mean, it's absolutely insane. It's like, and once once we start to capture all the properties on the map, you will see ridiculous sums of money coming in here. Again, just using my infantry around. I don't have any illusions that I'll actually get this, but I might be able to interrupt his caps at the very least. Here, I decide to put a little pressure here, because he's pretty weak here. He's only got a single base on an airport. If I can get an entire in range, lock down the airport, but he's in a lot of trouble. And um, and I don't. he doesn't particularly have a lot of stuff here yet, and he seems to be focused on getting this comm tower for now, so I feel pretty confident doing this. I really don't think there's much that he can do to stop me. So... Again, you gotta build a lot of Empire on this particular map. It's actually really important to do that. 
because if you don't, um, like the the Amtire needs to be pre-positioned. This is actually really important. You gotta you gotta make sure that you place the Amtire out long before the Battlecopters actually gets to zone your units out. So it's extremely important to do that. It's uh, one of the things that I do like though is that the Amtire also extremely important because I do believe with two com towers. I think Max Antire one shot from both uh, infantry on cities. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they do. So Antire are, are useful against from both for a lot more than just killing uh, Battlecopters. I, I don't think, I don't have the calcs in my head right now, but I don't think regular Max tanks, even with the power, I don't think they kill from both uh, infantry on cities. So if you want to wall break true from bolts, you need to have some Antire out to make sure you can kill his infantry. It's actually really important to do that. So build lots of uh, Antire in the early game against Von Bolt. You're definitely going to be using them at some point because, of course, one of his strengths is his ability to wall. Even against a CO like Max, that 10% extra defense on cities makes it very hard for Max to burst, burst through unless he pops like a superpower. And here, my opponent, again, also using his uh, black boats very wisely. He recognizes that I'm pressuring him here, so he's placing his units into a defensive formation. Day 8 rolls in. I capture my comb tower. I'm going to get my comb tower slightly ahead of his. It's probably not going to matter much here. But here, I actually decide to go for the attack. Again, you see how important Antire is against Von Bolt. One-shotting that infantry. And I move in with my Battlecopter. Comes in with my tank. And moving in my Battlecopters down here in the south as well. Again, just being annoying, preventing him from getting that city. I really don't want him to start capping it. And there we go. Using my Neo Tank and a tank as a shield. I do believe I'm going to get this city no matter what now. And again, now I'm just continuing to move my forces towards this airport right here. Bringing in the Antire as well. And another Neo Tank. And just... I think I built like... Closer to like 15 Battlecopters in this match, if not more. Um, again, they're just going to be so insanely good. So again, just using my using my uh, black boats to refuel my forces. Why not? So here, uh, the reason why I put my forces like this, if he, if he wants to bring down his Battlecopter, I think one bolt Battlecopter with two Com Towers. I don't think it's like a 100% chance to one shot, but I think it's close. So I was I was uh, banking on him not being able to one shot my Battlecopter. But if I if memory serves, I think he was able to. Spoiler alert. Day nine rolls in. Uh, my opponent finishes capping his Com Tower. And yeah, as you can see right here, it's a lock roll. It's a lock roll whether or not. Of course, he doesn't have his infantry, but still. And that does allow him to attack my Antire. But I'm not terribly faced about that because I have uh, a Battlecopter here as well. Now, he does use his Antire to one-shot my infantry and then he does the classic from... Well, he doesn't capture, but he just plonks his uh, his tank down. And now he's actually sort of threatening my Com Tower. So I might have to divert some of my some of my tanks that I really want to send this way. He's he's actually being pretty smart here because he recognizes that I'm going to place a lot of tre uh, pressure here. So he's like, okay, I'm going to move towards your Com Tower. So you better keep your units around here to interrupt that. Now he goes for the cities over here. He's definitely... And now he's also threatening this city. So one of the things about mixed base is... Uh, the moment you pressure one side of the map, you're going to get pressured on another side. And this is why I think mixed base maps are incredibly exciting and fun to play. Is because... Um, they the, the game never stagnates. You know, there's not just one front. Uh, the moment you pressure one place, another place is going to, by default, get, getting pressure less. Which opens up opportunity for counterattacks. So I really think mixed base are the most fun maps to play in Advanced Wars. So here, takes up my infantry, builds more Battlecopters. Now he's moving, uh, again, the classic Von Bolt City Sit, threatening this property as well. Now I am pretty ahead of him in income right now, 52,000 52, to 46,000. But if he manages to capture this property right here and this one, he's going to start equalizing that a little bit. So now he's actually relinquishing the, the threat. He realizes that I have a lot of forces over here. So now he's pulling his units up here to try and threaten my northern base. And he's got a lot of forces here in this area. So this is actually pretty scary. I don't really have much at all. I have a single Neo Tank and an Antire and a couple of infantry. Not really a big threat here at all. But he's got to be careful too because I'm threatening him pretty heavily over here. Day 9 rolls in. 
I get a good shot on his uh, on his tank, weakens his Battlecopter down to 5 HP, brings in my own Battlecopter, and now he's actually in a bit of a heap of trouble. I'm about to get uh, this city right here. I don't think there's anything he can do to stop me. So that's uh, some, some free cities that I'm getting. And I'm continuing the Battlecopter production like crazy. And now I'm like, okay, he's got artillery here. I'm just going to move away. You know, there's there's no point in attacking into Von Bolt uh, artillery. No point at all. And here I'm sacking an infantry to delay the cap of the city. It's completely warranted. It's in high funds. Whenever your opponent captures one of your cities, that's 4k of money that swings in his favor. So sacking an infantry to interrupt a cap in high funds is completely uh, warranted here. I even used my black boats to repair an infantry after the engagement. Still didn't go super well for me, though, because I'm up against Von Bolt and his stupid extra defense. Here, I recognize that I need to start building some Neo tanks here. If I don't, I'm in trouble. So I decide to stop. I decide to focus a little bit more on this area right here. Neither player are like like going all in on the other on any fronts, except for me. I'm threatening him really hard up here. The rest of the map is kind of stagnant at the moment, but with mixed base, like it's always going to blow up at some point. Now here he gets a nice shot. He gets a good, couple of good counter strikes here, but look at my power bar. That max superpower comes in so fast in high funds. Six stars is not a lot, a lot. Uh, no, it's not a lot at all. And uh, Max Blast is a disgustingly good power. Especially in mixed base, where there's so many different fronts. It can really swing the balance of the battlefield in your favor. So here, he's preparing. But he's about to get shellacked pretty hard. If, if memory serves, I think I pop Max Blast this turn. So he knows, he knows it's coming. He knows it's coming. You can see he's placing his units very defensively. He has to play defensive right now. Although he is being a little bit arrogant over here. When Max Blast is ready, you really shouldn't be capping cities right in front of enemy tanks. You know you're going to get absolutely mugged. Now he has to build a fighter here, which is a good good play. Because, again, I'm, I'm spamming a lot of battle copters, So I do have an untire, though. So and you can see he's playing very defensively here. He knows that that Max Blast can be absolutely crazy. So he needs to be careful. Okay. So here I go in with the battle copter. And boom, I pop my max blast. And this is going to be pretty insane. It's going to be absolutely pretty insane. So the max blast comes in. Look at this turn right here. One shotting from bolt infantry on cities. In comes the tank. Boom. Ruins the infantry. Cap caps over here. I'm capping over here. Takes out the tank. Now I'm capping this city as well. And I move in with my Battlecopter. Take out, takes out his Untire. Uses my Battlecopter to interrupt this cap. He, I know he has an Untire here. But now he has to choose which of the Battlecopters he wants to go after. In comes the Battlecopter as well. To threatening or uh, eliminating this infantry. So no it can no longer capture over here. And just look at this. What a, what a fabulous turn. It was very sad that I didn't get this. I think this would have come down to a... Uh, I think this would have come down to a luck roll. So it was very sad. Now he can join cap and get that property. Otherwise, I would have interrupted it completely. So it's not by Max Blast that like completely like eliminated him or anything. Not by any means. But it was a Max Blast that gave me a very big advantage. And furthermore, look how many cities I am capturing at the moment. So I'm gonna get this one. Uh, I'm gonna get this one. I might get this city if he doesn't interrupt it. I'm gonna get this one. So I'm currently capping four properties and I interrupted all of his caps. So I'm already ahead by 10,000, 56K to 46K. And I'm capping four cities. So popping this Max Blast, it didn't like eliminate his units off the board or anything. But it gave me a very big situational advantage, like a placement advantage. Look how look how my units are placed all around the map. I would say that I definitely have better positioning than my opponent right now. And I'm threatening multiple on one of his properties. In comes the fighter. And he does decide to go for the interrupt, which is smart. Takes up my Battlecopter as well. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, look at the map right now. His ex-machina is ready. 
Where do you think it'll hit? That's the big question, isn't it? He pops his ex machina. <laughs> it hits the black boats! I perfectly placed my unit. I spent about 30 minutes in move planner. And look, I haven't placed a single unit on the map closer to each other in terms of value than I have these two units, these five units. This infantry was actually crucial. Without this infantry, the uh, I do believe the Ex Machina would have hit this tile right here. But because I moved this infantry up right here, the Ex Machina will always hit these black boats rather than hitting any of my crucial Neo tanks. This is why Von Bolt is a terrible pick on this map. When you have four pre-deployed black boats, they, they act as Ex Machina lightning rods. And it's very easy to draw the Ex Machina to them. In fact, uh, you can draw up to three Ex Machinas to them over the course of a match. And if the black boats themselves are not enough, you can always place a tank or maybe a maybe a transport in, uh, uh, on top of them as well. And as long as you're careful about not bunching your units up too much, the Ex Machina will never hit anything of value. And that's huge, because in a high funds match, Fumble does rely on the Ex Machina quite a bit. The 10% firepower and defense is nice, don't get me wrong, but like in high funds, it's all about superpowers. And my superpower is infinitely better than his. All his Ex Machina does at the moment is give his units a 10-10 boost and weakening my black boats a little bit, which aren't really that crucial anyway. So um, he sent me a message and he was like, yeah, I, I, I done goofed. I, I should not have picked Fun Bolt for this matchup. But that doesn't mean the match is won, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I have an advantage. But um, that does not mean I could get complacent. So here he, he realizes he needs to interrupt my units, and he does. And I was very happy to see that he didn't get to do a one damage with his uh, with his tank right there. I don't know if there was a chance. Like the fact that he did it probably means that there was a small chance that he could do it. But uh, at the end of the day, I I, I do think that um, I do think that he um, I do think that he uh, did the calculations and maybe there was like a max luck roll or something. But uh, I, I don't I don't I think it, it was a very low chance. I think it was a desperation move more than anything because he really doesn't want to lose the city right now. So. Um, we're still on day 11. He has two artillery, three artillery down here, which, uh, I think that's a big mistake. I get it. I get it. You have indirect smacks does not, but with Battlecopter swarming everywhere, an extra movement given by Max Blast, those artillery are just not safe, so. So my turn rolls in. I decide to continue capping over here. I pull my tank back as well. And here, uh, I, I don't want his fighter to zone up my airport, so I move my units like this to create a wall for the fighter. Uh, the, 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 the replay viewer doesn't display movement ranges properly, sadly, but... Uh, so here I can still build battlecopters without be worrying that the fighter is going to go kill me. But I do recognize that he has a pretty strong force here, and he might start moving it towards my HQ, so... And if I, again, if you lose a single one of your HQs, then you're in trouble. So I move my Neo tank down here. Uh, in preparation for this attack that I'm seeing. I, I recognize that these three artillery can destroy my black boats really quickly. They're also already weakened, so it's going to be harder for me to use them to defend my HQ. But you can also see that I'm moving my entire in range of his uh, airport. And if I can get an airport lock, then uh, old man in a wheelchair here is going to be in trouble. So here, this turn I remember thinking a lot on. I really needed to guard my entire because he has two battlecopters in the vicinity. And, and I... I I was going to place the entire here, but I was worried he was going to kill this infantry and then move around to kill my entire. If he kills my entire, I'm in a bit of a pickle, so I decided to keep my entire far in the back, just to make sure. But here, I'm actually deciding to move in on his HQ, because I'm like, okay, I don't want to attack into this. Two artillery, that's just painful. From bolt sitting on cities, don't want to push through that. But I have a pretty big force here. I have three Neo tanks, and Neo tanks actually do decent damage to black boats. So I can actually start chipping down these black boats a little bit now and go for his HQ. So I'm like, okay, my game plan right now is to keep the pressure up here, get as many properties as I can, try to protect him, protect from, from a potential attack here, and then go all, all in on his HQ while drawing further X Machina to these black boats right here. So. Here, he does take up my Battlecopter, but that's okay. I just want to try and delay his capping of my cities for as long as possible. I was able to damage his infantry a little bit here, so he can't capture this uh, city in two turns, which I was very happy about. 
but uh, he realizes what's coming. He's actually going in and attacking my Neo Tank, but look at that. My Max Blast is almost ready again. It's disgusting how quickly that thing comes in in high funds. And he has to pull back his entire as well. He actually sacks his Battlecopter here. He, re he recognizes that uh, he's in a, it is in a lot of trouble. But now comes the attack that I was kind of that I was um, that I was foreseeing. I see now that he's moving his artillery in. He's gonna try and attack my HQ right now. And again, he's using his black boats cleverly to wall off. But I do have an attack coming, and I do think my attack is a little stronger than his. And he's in trouble over here as well, in a lot of trouble. He loses two Battlecopters, which is a pretty big deal. And I pop my Max Blast once again. And I decide to go for it. In this turn, I channel the energy of Star Flash, and I decide to go Yeet. Not only does the Max Blast allow me to pick up the fighter and block his airport, which is pretty devastating. You see how strong Max is right here. But I decide to go for his Black Boats. I get a nice little Battlecopter attack as well. Two movement is so disgusting. Look at this. Untire. One shots the spider. Neo tank comes in, one shots the entire. <laughs> Neo tank gets a strike on his Neo tank. And I even take out his artillery. And hell, why don't you use a tank to destroy a medium tank? Why not? When you have the firepower, am I right? And suddenly, Sergling Stew is in a lot of trouble. But now, his ex machina is ready. And it's important that I bait it properly. Here, I have two Neo tanks in very close proximity. So I might need to use my Neo tank to bait his Ex Machina. So I move my, and this this is, I think I spent maybe 45 minutes in move planner on this particular turn, trying to set up a formation which would bait his Ex Machina. So here, I have to actually pull a lot of my units together because um, the Ex Machina wants to hit, hit, like there's a lot of value gathered up right here. But I was just barely able to gather enough value. I even had to pull a tank back to really make the X Machina hit properly. I realized that this infantry wasn't needed, so I pulled it away. Build a bomber, because, again, I've decided to go all in on his HQ. So day 13 rolls in. He has to pop his X Machina. And I was able to bait it correctly. It hits a pretty big blob of units now. So that does slow down my attack on this base quite a bit. He probably will be able to dislodge his airport and get some air units back. But the most important thing for me was that the Ex Machina didn't hit here, or it didn't hit up here. Here, it's pretty inconsequential. Still doing some decent damage, but as far as superpowers goes, it's not really that big of a deal. Now, I do realize that attacking the artillery may be not my finest idea, because like that thing would have had to move off the base anyway. It couldn't have shot anyway, because he doesn't want to base block himself. So a little bit reckless. I do have the Antire to shoot the bomber, though. But if I'm, yeah, he's gonna try and wall that off, and being fumbled, he's probably gonna pull it off, so. So he's, he's playing, he's playing well, all things considered, considering he's so far behind in terms of CO. Like, he's really struggling with this matchup right now. Fumbled is just not good on this map, because of those aforementioned black boats. He is capping here, though, which is a little bit annoying, but uh, I'm not overly scared. I'm still 12k ahead of him in income. And this is kind of the part where I was like, ah, yeah, I probably went a little too hard on the HQ, because... Of course, he can build a mega tank, and what the hell am I gonna do to a Fumbolt mega tank on a base? Like, that thing won't die. Even, like, max bombers, I think, are gonna do, like, 18% damage to that thing. So, yeah, that's gonna be hard. It's not like I have artillery or rockets to kill it myself. So, I was like, yeah, this is probably not gonna work out for me. I'm not. This attack will fail because his mega tank will just sit there. So, uh, I'm like, okay, hmm, what should I do here? This unit, uh, that kind of, like, put a stop to my attack. So, I was a little bummed up by that. But I was like, fine, I'll just take my time. I have a bomber coming in. Once I get Max Blast, that bomber might be able to do a decent dent to the Mega Tank. So we'll see about that. I'll just continue to interrupt and take as many cities as I can and just like kind of win the War of Attrition by having more income than him. So I'm okay with that. But uh, yeah, I'm just mopping up a lot of his units on the battlefield. Here you can see, yeah, ne Max Neo Tanks against Fumble Black Bow. It's like 40 to 50% damage. Take a little while to eat through them, but it, it's you'll you'll get it eventually. I mean, it's it's only a matter of time, and the black boats aren't coming back once they die. So, but I was a little bit scared of this force right here because all of my unitary damage. So I build a mega tank just to kind of ward that away, just to tell him that yeah, don't attack here. There's no point. You're not going to be able to break through here. Day 14 rolls in, mega tank comes in, actually deals decently to uh, to the. Uh, to the uh, to the battlecopters here, he actually attacks my 
my Antire with this Bomber, but this is not a good move because, again, my power's already soon. This is why movement is so disgusting. So this may seem safe, and it would be against anyone who's not max, but my superpower is going to be ready again next turn. Believe you me. Six stars is nothing in high funds. But my opponent is uh, hes holding on. He's not surrendering yet, and now he's going in for the attack on my HQ side. He's being very careful, though. He has to be, because, again, Max Blast it can be popped at any moment, and then these units will come out swinging really hard. Day 14 rolls in. I decide to start attacking him on this side right now. I'm capping a lot of cities all over the map, and his income is going to get hit pretty hard if he doesn't interrupt this. Bomber comes in, I take out his Black, for uh, his black Force... His, his black boat, and I pop max force, because why not? This allows me to kill his Antire, or almost kill his Antire. It would have if it wasn't from Bolt. And it also, more importantly, allows me to take out his bomber, which is was his lifeline here, I think. So the fact that that thing is dead now is pretty bad for him. And uh, now his black boats are starting to fall as well. Yeah, he has a mega tank, but I'm not overly concerned. I can use a battlecopter to block his base. He has a fighter, though, so he'll be able to dislodge it, but... And, um, but, but still, I was pretty happy about that. And now I'm going to move a lot of units up here to start threatening this part of the map, too. And what is he really going to do, realistically, in this situation? Uh, 31 unit count to 47. This is pretty bad for him. Sure, it's going to take me a while to dislodge this mega tank, Especially when it's on a freaking HQ. But I'll be able to do it eventually through sheer force of numbers. I build another bomber because it's really my best bet against this Neo tank. And uh, here, he is trying really hard to get the Ex Machina. I think that, I'm pretty sure that's what he's going for, but if memory serves, he, I think he's about to resign. So, um, yeah, there we go. Ex Machina. And this is actually pretty devastating because it hits here. So that kind of puts a stop to my attack. I was really annoyed when I saw this. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe he actually got the Ex Machina. Builds another mega tank as well. So I was like, oh my god, this attack is like actually going to be a lot harder to pull off than I thought. But even though he's doing a good job defending his HQ, and that was a good Ex Machina, you can see that right now, like look at my economy right now. 66,000 to 48k. I'm just choking the old man out at this point. I am capping cities all over the map. I'm mopping up stragglers all over the map. 51 unit count to 30. The Quack Up has a unit limit of 70, by the way, so you can deploy a lot of units. And I'm using my black boats to repair my units as well. And uh, now I'm even going in and attacking him him everywhere here. Just What I'm doing right now is this is the Scorched Earth strategy that I've mentioned many times during my, my replay views. Um, this may seem weird, what I'm doing, but it, but it has a purpose. I'm target firing his infantry. This is called the Scorched Earth strategy. You're sacking your own units to damage the opponent's infantry. This means that even if they wipe all of your units out in the area, they won't get anything out of it because they can't camp. Like, a push in advance force is meaningless unless you're aiming to either base lock your opponent or capture their properties. So, the fact that, like, all of his infantry are damaged. He has two healthy infantry over here. They're going to spend three turns getting over to these properties right here. By that time, I will have won here, statistically. I have too many units in the vicinity. So, sacking units to kill enemy infantry when you're about to lose in a certain position is actually not a bad strategy at all. Uh, it's a bit of a, it's a, it's a, bit of a gam gambit because you're sacking units, which can come back to haunt you. But, again, if the enemy doesn't have healthy infantry to cap, then it doesn't matter. He does take out my bomber, which is pretty scary. And he's a, a third mega tank. I was like, man, I'm never going to break through here, am I? But I don't really need to. Like, honestly, should just pull back at this point. He's even capping my HQ, which is kind of funny. But right now, he has some borrowed time. Day 16 rolls in. The max blasts to end the casts, ladies and gentlemen. This is where he just dies. Mega tank comes in, shoots his Neo tank. All of his artillery are gone. Whatever attack he had, my fighter gets to strike his fighter. Bye bye, Battlecopter. It doesn't matter that he has three mega tanks because I can just run away. Now my bomber is going to front switch over here. And uh, at this point, there's like four or five different properties all over the map which are hanging. Even his comm towers are in danger at this point if he doesn't do anything. So, uh, even my Neo tank comes in here to strike his, his, um, his medium tank. 
And you can just see how disgusting Max is in this situation. I mean, his ability to just front switch, using my Battlecopter to block his Mega Tank. And I think I killed like maybe 20 units this turn. <laughs> It's pretty insane. Uh, that was there's a lot of units that just died in. Yeah, sure, I can't attack his HQ, but I don't I don't I don't need to. I will win this. Yes, I built two APCs. I wasn't BMing actually. I I I wanted like I realized that I'm gonna win this by capturing properties. I was like, might as well build two APCs and transport my infantry and get more properties. And uh, I do believe my opponent resigns. Fighting a lot longer than I thought, actually. But if I, if memory serves, I think he resigns this turn. Maybe yeah, I built missiles. Okay, I, I was BMing. I was I was BM. <laughs> he was BMing in a tournament. He pops his X mock and I didn't I actually don't remember this. Okay, impressive, impressive. He actually got a he actually got an X mock and I now he's building missiles too. He knows it's over. He knows it's over, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. That was a fun match. It was a lot more one sided than I thought it was when I when I look back on it. I really won this match with the first Max Blast, I think. And I really don't think it's doable for Von Bolt to beat Max on this map. I think Max is just too freaking strong. But, Circling Stu played well, all things considered, considering that his Ex Machina was practically useless. And he's up against a guy that gets two movement to all of his vehicles and air units with a superpower, which is just disgusting in a map like this. So. Given the massive uphill battle that Circling Stu was, was facing, he did pretty well, all things considered, uh, holding on until day 17. But yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you guys know what this means, right? I will advance to the finals of the Quack Cup. Uh, the match is, uh, I think it's going to be a little while before it starts. Uh, I'll see if I can throw a link. I think I can throw a link to it in the video description. You can guys can actually go follow it. Uh, my opponent hasn't been decided yet. I think, I think there's like one other game that needs to be completed before my match starts, so... Um, I, I'm guessing it should start within a week or so, depending on how slow that, that other game is. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Again, I'll, I'll see if I can link the match in the video description. You can click follow on the match before it starts. It's a nice little feature that they added, so if you want to spectate my finals match, you can do that. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you thought about this match. GG, Circling Stew. Hope to face you on the ladder soon. And uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Bye-bye! Hee <laughs> hee!